if you were to take a class on Buddhism in a college or university, one of the first teachings you'd learn about would be the Four Noble Truths. And from an academic point of view, that makes sense. As Sariputta said, all the teachings, all the Dharma is contained in the Four Noble Truths, in the same way that all footprints of all animals are contained in the footprint of the elephant. But from a personal point of view, it doesn't necessarily make all that much sense. Not everybody's ready for the Four Noble Truths, or open to receiving them in the way they should be received. This is why when the Buddha introduced the Four Noble Truths, he would often preface them with what was called the Graduated Discourse. Start with some very basic principles and work, work his way up to the Four Noble Truths once he felt that the person was ready. There's no recorded version of the Graduated Discourse in the canon. It's just mentioned in terms of topics. The first topic was generosity, or giving, and the simple reasons why the Buddha started with giving. On the one hand, he said that none of the higher attainments can be reached by a person who's stingy. So we want to make sure that his listener appreciated the principle of giving, and also the fact that giving is real and giving is valuable it means that we have freedom of choice. We have the freedom to give or not to give. If we didn't have any freedom of choice, giving wouldn't mean anything. And if people were just conglomerates, aggregates coming together and then disappearing at death, there would be no value in being generous with one another because there would be no lasting impact. So when he starts with giving, he's affirming the principle of freedom of choice and affirming that there's something to us that goes beyond death. generosity or giving, you would move on to virtue, which is a kind of gift. You give safety to yourself, safety to others through restraint. Virtue for the Buddha is mainly a, an issue of restraint. You refrain from killing, stealing, illicit sex, lying, taking intoxicants. In this way you protect yourself and you protect others. You give a gift of safety to them, and if that gift is universal, in other words, you give it to everybody, then you're going to have a share in that gift as well. This also teaches some other important principles, that true happiness can't depend on the abuse of others. If it does, they're not going to stand for it, and it's not going to last. And there the Buddha would start talking about the rewards of giving and the rewards of generosity, in terms of having respect of other people, being well-liked, having a sense of confidence. And there are also many material benefits. Wealth, beauty, long life, all those things that we chant when we chant blessings at the meals. And then the rewards in heaven. It's through generosity, through virtue, that people go to heaven. So he's painting a picture of the rewards of good karma here. Then he turns around and talks about the drawbacks. Heaven is impermanent. When people fall, they fall hard. You can think about the Buddha in the night of his awakening, with thinking, having that second knowledge in the middle of the night. We saw beings dying and being reborn in line with their karma, and going up and down and up and down. And it's almost like samsara is playing a trick on people. You work really hard to develop good karma, and you get the rewards. But then if you're attached to the rewards, then you start behaving in unskillful ways to protect those rewards, and then you start falling again. And even when you don't think you're attached, the fact that you just simply get used to having things easy in a certain way makes it hard when you fall. You don't have to look at heaven, even the human life. I've been reading a lot of biographies in French to build up my French or recover it. 
And of course, every biography ends with death. And before, before this death, it's interesting to note that everybody who seems to have an enviable position in life becomes the target of a lot of jealousy. And as you get older and weaker, it's not that people let up and act to treat you more gently. They actually get worse because they see that you're weak and it's time to get rid of you quickly. So the rewards of good karma can turn on you. This is why the Buddha talked about the drawbacks of heaven and the drawbacks of sensuality. So you begin ready to see that maybe renunciation might be a good thing. There might be some peace there, there might be some rest, there might be some safety. And learning how to give up the rewards of sensuality. And that's when the Buddha would teach you the Four Noble Truths. Because you want a happiness that's noble. This is one of the reasons why the Buddha calls them noble truths, is because they're the guidelines for conducting a noble search. In other words, a search for something that you can do through your actions that leads to a result that doesn't die, doesn't have any aging, illness, or death. That's what he means by noble, as opposed to the ignoble search where you're looking for happiness and things that are going to change, things that are going to age, grow ill, and die, or you're going to age and grip, grow ill and die. Or as the Four Noble Truths put out the path, or provide the leadership or guidance for a path of a fourth kind of karma. In other words, there's the karma that good karma, bad karma, mixed karma, but then there's karma that's neither good nor bad. The karma leads to a path that leads to an end that goes beyond karma to the end of karma. And that's the only happiness that human action can provide that won't turn on you. Of course, it's not that samsara is playing a trick on you. Your mind is playing tricks on you, holding out rewards and saying, okay, you work for this and things will get really nice. But then you get attached to the nice things and you start misbehaving and you create a lot of bad karma and you fall back down again. And the mind's been doing this to itself over and over and over again. And this is why after the second knowledge, the Buddha moved on to the third knowledge. Is there a way out of this? And it's through seeing the Four Noble Truths, not just seeing them, but actually applying them to life. In other words, using them as framework for how you look at your life and how you conduct yourself in life, because they carry duties. Suffering is to be comprehended. Its cause is to be abandoned. Its cessation is to be realized. The path is to be developed. And so instead of dividing life up to what you like and what you don't like, or what's you and what's not you, or what exists and what doesn't exist, it's simply an issue of where is the suffering, what should be done about it, and how do you approach it in such ways to put an end to it. And it's only after realizing that every other happiness that you could find through action has its drawbacks. And it's something that can turn in you. That's when you're really ready for the Four Noble Truths, willing to give them a serious try and really apply them, really follow the duties. Because all too often when suffering comes, we just turn our backs on it, run away from it, try to avoid it. But if you do that, you're never going to comprehend it. And right here, though, is where you see how the duties of the Four Noble Truths all are interrelated. Because if you try to comprehend suffering, you look at it long enough, it really requires, one, the conviction that this is something that's really worthwhile, and two, it requires strength of mind to be with pain, to be with suffering long enough so you can comprehend it. And due to that, you need to develop the path, both the right view that points out why this is important, and the practice of right effort, right mindfulness, right concentration, to give the mind the strength it needs to be able to sit with pain, not get blown away by it. So what we're doing right now, as we sit and meditate, it can either be the kind of karma that leads to a nice rebirth or pleasant conditions. 
trains the mind how to be equanimous, how to be balanced in the face of difficulties, and to live life in a way that minimizes suffering. Or it can be aimed at going beyond suffering altogether. It's the same practice, but done with a different motive, different values. This is why the Buddha taught that graduated discourse, because it teaches values. It shows the importance of the Four Noble Truths and why they are so basic, why they're noble, and why we should want to have a noble goal for our path, a noble goal for our practice. So when you find the mind wandering off, remember those principles, generosity, virtue, the rewards of generosity and virtue, but then the drawbacks. And these are the drawbacks of good actions. Can you imagine what the drawbacks of bad actions are? The drawbacks of acting on greed, aversion, and delusion. So when you find the mind wandering off, try to think of these principles to reestablish your values. Or get them back in line with the Four Noble Truths, so you can actually apply the duties. These are not duties that are being imposed on you by anybody, aside from the fact that the fact of suffering pushes you in this direction, if you take it seriously enough. All too many people, though, suffer greatly in their lives. They don't get pushed in this direction at all. They don't see at the value of this, because they don't try to comprehend their suffering. They hold on to beliefs about why they're suffering because of this person or that person or this social condition or that social condition. They didn't turn around to see that the suffering in life actually comes in two sorts. There's the suffering of the fact that things are in constant stressful, not self. They're products of fabrication. And then there's the suffering of the Four Noble Truths, the suffering that's based on craving. And the main message of the Four Noble Truths is if you focus on this kind of suffering, the suffering that your mind is creating for itself, then when you solve this problem, then the other kind of suffering is not going to weigh on the mind at all. So it really is within your power not to suffer. That's the good news of the Four Noble Truths. But it's up to us to keep in mind the values that can place the Four Noble Truths first, where they belong, the beginning of the path, the guide to the path, the values that open our way to the end of suffering. the noble goal of the deathless.